come here today to Monk Lakes in Kent and we're going to be having a look at how to get the most from fishing on a short pole. It's a method that is best to be built up across sort of like the first three hours of your match and you'll be looking to catch a big weight of fish in the last couple of hours. So we're going to be having a look at the tackle, the rigs, the bait, everything you need to know on how to get the most from it. Let's have a look at it now. Okay, so let's have a look at the rigs that we're going to be using. Um, for all sort of five metre type fishing, short pole, you, you're looking to catch a lot of fish. So the rigs need to be very simple and positive. Today I've set up two rigs for two different lines. I've got somewhere where I can drop on throughout the match or st as a starting line, which I'm going to feed with pellets. And then another line that I'm going to leave totally alone until the last two hours I'm going to feed with meat. Because meat generally on a lot of these venues where it is allowed does pick up the bigger fish. So this is my pellet rig. It's a little bit lighter than the meat rig. So I've got a green 10 to 14 TKS twin core. Uh, the main line is an 018 Power Optex, which comes down to a six inch 015 hook length with a size 16 B911 with a hairy pellet band on it. So just gonna fish hard pellets on that. Um, the float, I do like to use quite positive floats. I mean, the depth here is probably four and a half foot, something like that. So using a four by 16 float is actually quite a heavy float for the depth that I'm fishing. But like I say, you get a lot of fish coming into your peg, lots of liners and all the rest of it. So something that's just gonna sit there and be stable is always better. The floats are DF, DF2, 4x16's float. As you can see, it's got a nice thick bristle on it. And I don't, really, I don't like to dot them down too much. I always like to leave at least half the bristle showing so that I can sit there and I can ignore a lot of the little jibs and dobs and silly little indications that you get when you're fishing like this. So I can just wait for a good positive under and then strike into my bite. The shot in pattern, again, very simple, I've just got a bulk of number eight shot with two droppers. And that that's that's it for the pellet rig. The meat rig is identical in shot in pattern. Exactly the same again. Um, it's exactly the same depth, but I've got the uh, an extra section of the pole to fish ever so slightly further along my peg. Um, this, but this time, beefy elastic up a little bit. I've got a black 12 to 16 twin core so that will enable me to land the fish a little bit quicker when they turn up in numbers on both the rigs i've got pots on them uh, generally speaking i like to loose feed over the top of the rig but sometimes when the fishing's a little bit harder by potting in that little bit of bait over the rig you can get a bite quite a bit quicker again 018 power optics main line and a six inch hook length of 018 power optics this time again slightly more beefed up hook wise i've got a size 14 b911 which is ideal for taking two cubes of six mil meat and that is it so we'll have a look at the bait we're going to be using and then we get on with some fishing as we mentioned when we was going through the rigs bait for fishing at five meters or on the short pole definitely doesn't have to be complicated. As I said, I'm gonna be fishing pellets on the short line in front of me. So I'm just gonna feed six mil bait tech carbon coarse pellets. I do like to feed a slightly bigger pellet and on some venues I would f go up to feeding eight mil pellets. Basically what I'm looking for is to feed a small amount of bait very regularly but have the benefits of the noise drawing the fish into the peg. So sort of like every sort of 90 seconds, just, it's just gonna be a case of picking up five to eight pellets and just throwing them around the rig. So, and that's, and when I hook a fish, throw a few more over the top while I'm playing it. And then by doing that, you can get the fish really lined up. And that, that's how you can build a big weight very, very quickly. On the other line where we're gonna be fishing meat, got a selection of meats I use. Um, the main one is the Mighty Meat from Baitech. Um, 
that's sort of like more of a standard meat. But something I've cottoned on to over the last sort of year or so is this stuff, Entice Poloni. Never really been a fan of, fan of flavoured baits, to be honest with you. Um, but this one is, a, is an exception. I do find that I do catch quite a few fish on that. And what I do is I'll say I'll cut up three tins of meat, uh, two tins of this, one tin of entice bologna mixed in, just to, give, just to give a little bit of extra smell and taste and all the rest of it. And then I cut an extra tin up uh, into eight mil cubes and I'll use that as hook bait, just, just as an option. So we're just gonna cut that up now. Drop him in. Straight down on the under. Another bait tub here. This. And there we go. That's perfectly cubed. And it just gives us another option. Like I say, I do like to use two six mil cubes quite a lot, but just if rotor are a problem or anything like that, I can double up with these or just fish a single one just to pick out the bigger fish. When you're feeding meat, again, it's similar to pellets. It's just small amounts very, very often, every sort of 90 seconds or so, four to six cubes of meat all day long. And then sort of hour by hour, sort of increase it. So by the third hour, you'll probably be feeding 15 pieces of meat regularly. And then when you go on it, Again, very small amounts, and when you hook a fish, chucking a large handful of bait over the top of it. So you're always looking, when you're playing your fish, you're always looking to line the next one up. That's, that's the key when you're fishing at five meters. So let's get all this together, get over there and catch a few fish. Okay, so we've been fe feeding the swim for a while now, and there seems to be a few bubbles popping up on both the lines. So been having a little go on other lines around the peg so hopefully they've built up nicely and they're ready for us to get on this short line so let's get in and have a go so i'm going to start off on the on the pellet rig got a six mil banded pellet on there i'm not going to bother with a pot to start with i'm just going to uh ship out and see how we go the fish should be used to it being a loose fed but like i say you if the fishing's a little bit harder, feeding feeding with a pot just just over your rig definitely can help you get those bites a little bit quicker. So when you lay your rig in on the short line, because you're fishing on a slope, always lay your rig out past the pole tip. Hold your float out a little bit just so it all swings into the slope, and then you can drop it down and it'll be rest sitting perfectly and waiting for a bite. So, like I say, it's just a case of just six or eight pieces of meat over the other line, five or six pellets over the, the pellet line. And now we can just sit and wait for a bite for a little while. We don't really want to keep bait going through all the time because, because we've got the depth, sometimes the fish will come off the bottom a little bit. And that's when you get the line as foul lookers and too much fizzing in your peg as well. On the subject of the fizzing, what I've done when I plumb my peg up, a lot of anglers, they see it as taking a top two kit and putting two sections on it and that's it, just plumb up there and fish there. It's worth having a little bit of a plumb around when you're fishing like this. So basically, the best way to determine where to fish is to ship the rig, keep plumbing out as you go and find just where the slope finishes and bottoms off. And so once you've found where it's level on the bottom, that'll be your softest area. So it's a case of coming back just up the slope about a foot or so, and that just leaves you on that, that harder, harder bottom and just uh, be a lot easier to fish. You get a lot, lot cleaner bites when you're fishing on a hard bottom rather than a soft silty one so that's always worth looking out for. And again it's it's just 
not always about fishing five metres, you know. Sometimes a short line can be six metres or it could be a top kit, you know. Basically, I've, I feel that five foot is an ideal depth for fishing on that line. So if you can find that, a little bite there, if you can find that, then you can sort of, you can sort of settle with that. But if you go out to five metres and you've got seven foot, sometimes it can be better to fish even shorter. It's all about working it out for, for every different peg that you go to. It's not always just about fishing five metres. It can be a top kit, top four, top five, top six. So you just have to work it out as you go. Okay, so we've moved on to the meat line. There's loads of fish on pellets. The F1's up to four or five pounds, and a load of carp up to sort of eight pounds. Just loose feeding over the top, and all the time we've just been feeding this meat line just off to the left of, of, of that one. Just a section further, and uh, yeah, first drop in here, and uh, there's a fish straight away, so hopefully it's going to be solid. Like I say, meat usually picks out the better fish, so it's either better fish or they just feed with such confidence that you can, you can end up catching so quickly, which, like we are now, and going into the last hour of our little little session here you want to put as many in the net as you can in a short space of time which helps fighting well today these he's given up now another decent fish Def definitely don't take too long to stick a weight in the net when you're catching them like that. Now I've changed to this rig, I've, uh, as I've been loose feeding it all day, just uh, using the flexi pot on it this time, just feeding a full pot with two six mil cubes of meat on the hook and then probably, I don't know, 30 cubes of meat in the pot. So, get that shipped out. Let's see if they're still there. Just hold that float nice and tight so everything swings in. There we go, there's another one. And then, then we up one, chuck some bait over the top of it and land your fish. And hopefully, doing it like that, you'll be able to, to line the fish up. So you see how quick we've dropped in and had this one. That's, you know, if they're all five pound fish, I don't think this one is, but if you get lucky with a few doubles or anything like that, you can really rack up a good weight to to add to what you've caught throughout the day, so. There he is. Old Bertie the Barbel.
There we go, there's another one on the meat line. Meat line's really come good in the last hour and leaving it for all that amount of time has definitely, definitely helped us to catch really quickly towards the end of the session. Um, we started off in front of us on the pellets. We caught really well there. Like quite very, very consistent line that was. Um, I find the pellets, they pick up lots of different sizes of fish, lots of different types of fish. So it's a good starting line, good line to drop on if it goes quiet elsewhere. But always keep that meat line fed. Keep feeding it and drop on it for the last 90 minutes or so and you can end up with a really, really good boost to your catch at the end of the day. I hope you learned a few things from the video and uh, give it a try on your local commercial.